what three baits do I think you should be using in the month of April? That's what we're going to talk about right now. If you like this kind of content, do me a favor. Click that like and subscribe button. I do vlogs, closer look videos on lures, and lots of other things. And I need you as a subscriber. So click the subscribe button and welcome to the family. When you're here, you're family. April is a great time to get out there and start fishing throughout the country. We're going to look at the upper, middle, and the southern region of the country. I'm going to give you three lures that I think you should use in all three three areas and some of them are going to be kind of the same but because of weather especially from up north to down here in Florida things are a little bit different in each area but right now the weather is finally starting to warm up weather temperatures are going to start to get a little bit warmer and down here we've had 90 degree weather already which has really changed the fishing and we had a lot of rain for the first time down here during the winter and that's really odd but water temperatures are finally going to allow most anglers to get out there and find fish there's going to be loads of places that are having the pre-spawn or have already spawned and those things are some of the stuff we're going to look at in this video and in april this is a time when top water lures start to play into what's going to happen now if you're going to use a top water bait i suggest you still kind of twitch it fairly slow because bass are still not super aggressive unless the water is at a really nice temperature and in most cases in most places there's going to be a bluegill spawn and there's also going to be a shad spawn happening too so as the temperatures warm up there's a few things that are going to come into play more and more we're going to see a bluegill sp uh, spawn and also a shad spawn and we're going to try to use the size of that spawn in the baits that we use April is a fantastic month that, of a transition month. This is when the spring is spring is just starting to happen. The blooms are starting to happen. The grass and the trees are starting to come to life. And so are the bass. And as the water temperature starts to get a little bit warmer, their metabolism is also going to start to get more and more, start to happen more and more. And they will become more and more hungry. And instead of eating maybe once a week, they're going to start eating once or twice or three times a week. And they're going to be actively searching for a place not only to spawn, if you're way up north or in the middle of the country, but they're going to be looking for forage fish to eat. April's also a time when the bass are going to start to look for that cover for the hot months of the year. They're going to look for docks and move into docks and look for grass and structure and those things. And instead of being someplace where there isn't any of that, they're going to start looking for it and they're going to start hiding there and try to ambush their dinner. So look for those and start fishing those a little bit more. Where you were fishing a little bit deeper, right now, the time that the fish are going to start moving in not only to find that that lover but also they're going to start to move in because the forage fish are going to be on the shoreline a little bit more than in the deeper water so if you're up north i suggest you use number one i think you should try, start off with a chatterbait put a good trailer on that chatterbait too give it a little more bulk a little bit more action in the tail but a chatterbait is great in april up north my second bait is a lipless crankbait i want to bounce that i don't want to rip it through things yet i want to swim it a little bit slower or as i make twitches i don't want to rip it i want to just let the bait go up and then slowly fall down. Bass are gonna start targeting it on sound a little bit more as the water gets warmer. So my number two bait is a lipless crankbait. And my third is a small swim bait, something that's in that three to four inch size. Now they are gonna eat those bigger six inch swim baits also, but right now still continue to downsize as the water is cooler at night and then it needs a lot of sunlight to get warmer during the day. If you're in the middle of the country, I think you should be using a bladed jig or a chatter bait to start off with. I think that's great this time of year. I've noticed that that's what the pro anglers are using a lot during this time of the year and up while they're doing their fishing tournaments. But a chatterbait is really a fantastic bait just as that transition is happening from cold, really cold water to a little bit warmer water. Also, it acts like a bluegill and bass are actively searching for a forage fish that they can eat. So a chatterbait's perfect if you're in the middle of the country. Next, I love a spinnerbait. I love a spinnerbait. I think you can't go wrong with a spinnerbait. A spinnerbait acts like a forage fish, has the shine and the flash that you're looking for. Also displaces a lot of water and it also gives a lot of vibration on uh, off that, that triggers the bass lateral line to seek it out and eat it. So my second bait is a spinnerbait. And the last bait I think you should be using is some sort of creature, spicy beaver creature bait. Something a soft plastic that you can put in the right spots and you can bounce off the bottom and trigger those bites. Crawfish are gonna be 
something that bass are feeding on throughout that middle of the country. So something that gives off a good vibration, gives has good claws that paddle, is really going to be successful in the middle of the country right now. Now if you're in the southern, where I am, my first bait is going to be a soft plastic worm. I'm using only a worm right now. Um, that is because I want to throw to a certain area or flip to a certain area and I want that worm either Ned, Nico rigged, whatever you want to do it, Nico rigged or Texas rigged. I want that bait to fall a certain way on the edges of grass and that's what uh, how I target fish right now in April. I want to make a cast and let that bait just fall slowly through the water column. I want the bass to be able to see it or smell it and then come out and hammer it. So my first bait down here in the south in the southern states is a really good worm. I particularly like the DOA cow worm, the five inch cow worm. I just think it's the phantom. It's the best bait out there for, for me. My second bait I think you should be using because it's April and I know we're having a bluegill spawn is some sort of bluegill swim bait. Something that's small, compact, has a lot of uh, a lot of action, something that you can fish in different water columns. Even though I am technically gonna fish in the upper water column, I wanna make a good cast and I don't wanna burn it in. I wanna just keep that bait in that upper one to two foot range and just slowly, methodically swim it in. I want it to have great action, great kicking action, and look like a fleeing bluegill. Now, the one that I use is probably not going to be the one you use and I don't really normally suggest one but there's one from H2O Express I think from Academy or whatever it is it's their brand and it's like the ultimate bluegill swim bait or something similar it is fantastic it stays in the upper water column it's small they have three or four different sizes I think I use the three inch size I do change out the hooks which pisses me off because the hooks stink but once you change out the hooks it swims amazing and it's cheap too and there's a lot of times I'm not going out there, even though I have the opportunity to fish some great expensive stuff, I really am balling on a budget. That's the truth. I don't go out there to try to get, to get the most expensive lure because I think there are some that you can get that are just as good or moderately good that work. And that H2 Express, whatever it's called, is really a great bait. And my third one is a spinner bait. Now you can use whatever spinner bait you want. Honestly, there's 82 billion of them at this time. And there isn't anything that makes one spinner, well, there are some things that make spinner baits better than the other, the collapsibility, the hook, that kind of stuff. But if you get a quality spinner bait from one of the big brands, you're gonna be pretty successful. There's some that you can get at Walmart and you can get um, Z-Man or Rapala. There's just so many, Strike King makes probably the best spinner baits there are. They are great baits right now. They have a lot of flash. We can, you can use them in different water columns, but the, the thing about them is, is that they kick, they use, they have that vibration that they put out. And as this water starts to get warmer, because I think the other day down here in Florida, I was fishing in like 74 degree water because it's just been insanely warm. And at that temperature, I can, I can watch a bass feel that vibration and come from a distance to attack that spinner bait. So my number three bait is a spinner bait. So hopefully that helps you in the upper, middle, and the southern states of this great United United States of America. I'd love to hear what baits you're using so I can use them next time in April or whenever and put them in this video so I can get more knowledge and information on what really y'all are using. So comment below and tell me what bait you're using. Thanks for hitting that like and the subscribe button. Make sure you comment below and tell me what you think. Remember, take a kid fishing. Thank you for watching this. Get your fish on. I will talk to you very, very soon. Cheers.